Well, good morning, everyone. It's Friday. It's the 15th of November, and I hope you guys are getting ready for an amazing weekend. I'm going to St. Petersburg, Florida with my wife to, uh, to visit some friends. It's going to be a great time. So I want to show you something that news is all over now. No one was talking about this in January and February, but now they are. Trump wants good news to help the economy hold up ahead of the presidential election. And I think that's what's going to resolve China. And I think Trump's, uh, and I think Trump is smart enough to know that. So I believe he's going to negotiate so that when it's time for re-election, China is not pulling the market south. And he can go and say, hey, look at the stock market, all-time highs, all-time highs, all-time highs. I think that's huge. And again, nobody's been talking about it till now. Now everyone's talking about it. But I think that's going to be the biggest catalyst. Till then, Russell 2000, the small caps, the index that's mostly influenced or impacted by China, not the large caps, not the S&P 500, but the small caps, mid caps, already back in its range, even if we increase the time period, already back in its range. A little lower, it's going to start pushing the S&P 500 lower, and the S&P 500 is flat. I mean flat. We haven't gotten anywhere i mean anywhere over the last several days the market is grossly overbought as you could see right here so let me tell you something interesting we got a couple of reports coming out actually in just a few minutes we got retail sales we got empire state manufacturing survey and most important industrial production the big reports are going to be industrial production and retail sales Retail sales make up three quarters of the economy, three quarters of the GDP. So alone, this report will not mean too much. But when it's taken into account with the GDP, it's substantial, especially towards the end of the year when we have those end of year rallies. Expect The expectations for this number are, I believe, point, here we go. Oh, now the consensus is point two. I think, I believe it was point one yesterday. They changed it overnight. So anything better than 0.2 will be good. If we can get better than 0.3, it'll show that we're increasing activity in retail sales, and that would be really great because, again, a lot of retail traders don't realize how much impact retail sales have on U.S. economy. So again, keep your eye on this report. Don't worry about what the actual number is. Worry about the consensus. 0.0, um, .0 obviously, that wouldn't be that great, but again, According to Wall Street, earnings for retail are down about 2% from a year ago. It's not great, but in light of what we're seeing with China, it's not the worst thing in the world. So if we can show a little bit of a heartbeat, we'll be in a good place. Now, I got a special treat for you today. I want to go over a few stocks that are making highs on my relative strength list. These are the stocks that I'm going to be watching over the next several days. When I say several days, over the next few weeks week two. These stocks have the strongest relative strength in the S&P 500. That means these are the strongest stocks in the S&P 500. Now, I wouldn't be buying them right now. I would wait for a little pullback. But right now, with the market being really, really fast acting, and this is a time to be really nimble, and I'll get into that in a minute. But you want to be real nimble. You want to take pro quick profits. You want to get out of trades. This is not a time to buy and hold because markets are stagnant right now. So I would wait for a pullback. Corvo looks really good right now for a longer term. These are S&P stocks. I'll go over NASDAQ stocks too. Tiffany. Tiffany's, don't underestimate this stock. The numbers were better than expected. The stock is at near 52-week highs right now. I think we'll come down a little bit more here, maybe fill this gap and start coming up once again. What I like about Tiffany is we've been congesting for a long time here, as you could see. And usually, after stocks congest for a long time, they they set up for a nice momentum run. So Tiffany's the second one. Finally, we got CTL, CenturyLink. These are the top three strongest stocks in the S&P 500 relative strength-wise. Again, if you look over a longer period of time, notice the stock has been congesting. A good time to buy a stock after it goes down is not as it's coming down, but as it's beginning to move sideways and move back up, make that round bottom. And that's what it's been doing right now. And it looks like it's coming out. And again, it's been congesting. It's been congesting for the almost the entire year. So if you see more breakout above this level right now, CenturyLink is definitely a buy. 
Those are the top three S&P stocks for next week. Let me give you the top NASDAQ stocks. I want to give you guys some value here. All right. Cisco Systems. Cisco Systems, believe it or not, and I know it doesn't look that strong right now, but over time, Cisco has been one of the strongest stocks. Believe it or not. Let me go over a period of time. Notice that? It's not really... It looks like it's coming down, but if you look at a five-year chart, you'll see that it's actually fairly close to all-time highs. So Cisco is one. Apple, obviously everybody knows Apple. Apple's another. All-time highs. These are the three top NASDAQ stocks. And the last one, I'm sure everybody's heard of this company once or twice before, Microsoft. These are the top three relative strength stocks. So again, for the S&P 500, the three strongest stocks. Now, this is my proprietary scan. This is my proprietary relative strength scan. It's very powerful, and it tells me my top stocks. So every Friday, I'm going to give you my top three NASDAQ and my top three S&P stocks. So the top three S&P stocks are Cuervo, QRVO, Tiffany, and CTL. And again, and again, the last three, the top three NASDAQ stocks are Cisco, Apple, and Microsoft. So now that we got that out of the way, I want to show you something really cool. This is a chart of Amgen, okay? Now, we have a program, a system, really, really cool system. And it's, it's a system that where I send you short-term signals, when to enter, when to exit. Uh, I give you the buy signal, I give you the short signal. It's very, very cool. Now, I wanna show you something really cool. We got into this trade on the 4th of November, all right? We got out of this trade on the 11th of November. We made on the option in less than five trading sessions, I believe, four or five trading sessions, we made on this option 47.3%, all right? And I'm regularly sending these type of signals to folks just like you, all right? Right now, right now, this is a stock picker's market. This isn't a time to buy and hold. Uh, even swing trading right now with the economy, with, with, I mean, look at the S&P right now. I want to show you this. I mean, this is not a, uh, it's just, it's not doing anything. And the small caps, they're coming off. Look at this. They're already coming off. They're already losing value. So this is a market where you want to be really, really nimble. So I regularly send out my top list of short-term trade opportunities, just like the Amgen trade, where we made 47.3% on a stock like this just in a few days, and I'm probably about to go in long again. Now, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to know anything. I'll tell you where to buy. I'll tell you where to sell, and I'll give you my best setups where you can win in a market that's difficult to trade like we're in right now. So again, click the link below, check out this video, Learn everything you can about this system so it'll show you how to gain these amazing entry and exit setups on the best momentum stocks. These are short term. I think you're going to love it. Click the link below, learn now, and achieve success like the 47.3% trade on Amgen. Talk to you guys soon. Have a great weekend. Bye.